Konnichiwa, minna-san. Gitsapalooza ni yokuso. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gitsapalooza. I just completed um, modifying the Beast Rider uh, for the Bakamono so that it um, fits on the uh, on the giant bat. Sorry for losing focus here. Come on, there we go. Um, this was not an easy task. Um, this is the only way I could figure out how to get the guy on. Maybe this is the way he's supposed to be. I found one photo on the internet that were, uh, but it was a bad photo of, of the model mounted here. Unfortunately, um, it, uh, he'd done it a little differently. He had it sitting and the legs were a little splayed out and I, I just didn't like it, but I couldn't really tell. So I did major modifications in order to get this model to be on. And I also wanted it to be removable. So, um, as you'll notice, I got him kind of standing with one leg on the wing and kneeling with his other leg. That took some pretty major um, modifications. I'll see if I can zoom in here. Um, so what I had to do, I'll pull the guy off so you can see it, but what I had to do was basically cut the knee joint from the back and then push the, the calf down and then bend the foot up and out of the way so that I could get the leg in position where I wanted it. Um, it's just it's just barely long enough for what I wanted to do for the thigh is uh, a little short, but I think I got it close enough. And then I messed with the hair because the bat is obviously not flying and the hair is, I think this model was probably made for the Nyan. Um, <clears throat> so the hair was flying behind him and but since the bat is obviously not flying, I, I dropped the hair. Um, and then the big thing I did Again, I'll see if I can get it in focus. Come on. Come on. I got my cameras doing stupid things now. There we go. Is You'll notice, see that little circle there? There's a brass pin going through his hand into the head of the bat. And I did that in one go. Basically, I held the model where I wanted it. And then I, I um, put a little dent in the back of his hand so it would be easy to find a spot with the drill and then I just pushed the drill carefully through and it went through his hand right into his head and that way I knew the angle would match for the pin and then if I can gently pull this off without breaking the spear arm off um, I'll turn this so you can see it there we go I think that's the best one to show the modifications I made so so there's the pin extending down from his hand and then you can see the the green stuff on his thigh right there. And so after I cut it and spread that joint, then I went in with some green stuff. It's not a very fancy job, but I just patched it so it looks a little more like a solid leg. And then on the bat, so there's a permanent hole in the top of the bat's head. However, when I'm not focusing on it and you're just looking at the model, because I touched up the gray paint right around the hole, um, it's... It doesn't really show. It's just another, it's just another, sorry. <laughs> just let me point the camera in some random direction. Um, it's just another hole, especially without the bright lights of my painting desk shining on it. Um, so I think that's the best way to go. It, it, uh, I like the stance a lot. Um, this is not, however, probably a, a beginner's task. There was a lot of monkeying around. I had to do a lot of twisting of the model you have to be careful when you do that so you don't, you know, fracture the, 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 um, the, the metal when you do that. If you put too much twisting stress or bending stress, the model will just fail. And uh, luckily I didn't do that. So I hate, I, I just absolutely detest the old ball joints. This leg here um, that is... Uh, Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to brace myself so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. See that there's a ball joint right there. And so I had to kind of hold him in place and figure out how I was going to put him on without really having the pin through his hand because that ultimately needed to be twisted. Can I do this through the camera? I can. Oh, my gosh. And then I had to, I said, like, all right, I want his leg resting on the, on the, on the wing there. Like he's leaning out. <clears throat> it's a little bit of, of, uh, goblin magic, I guess. You know, he's probably got a handful of hair or something that he's holding on to, but 
but uh, he's kind of leaning off the side of the bat, looking in the same direction as the bat, and he's going to throw his spear. So I, I think the, the, uh, I think it worked really well, and I, I don't know, maybe that's what the, the model maker had in mind when he de designed the sculpt. It's just that this one leg didn't quite work f f the way that I wanted it. So uh, it took a lot of effort to get that squared away. But otherwise, uh, there wasn't, you know, wasn't much to it. I just bent the hair, and I, I had to twist his hand a little bit so that it sat flat on the bat. Um, and uh, otherwise, everything was okay. Um, it's a really good sculpt. I mean, that's intimidating, I think. For, for a goblin, that's pretty intimidating. So, so yeah, I'm glad to have this done. I was um, actually going to paint him up like the Adam West Batman and then put a little Robin on his shoulder, and so I'd have Batman and Robin. Unfortunately, the smallest birds, and I have all these cool birds from Mastercrafted Miniatures. Unfortunately, the smallest bird is, is, is still pretty big. It's a lot bigger than a Robin, and, and more important than that, I can't find a way to nicely fit it on the, on the model. I tried the perching Robin, and then I tried the smallest of the flying birds, and, and I just can't. I just can't figure out how to make them fit properly. I mean, I could do, you know, I could put a little tiny pin or something so that the robin was like flying around or something like that. But, but it seemed like I, I, it was pushing it too far. So uh, you know what? I'm just going to be happy with um, getting this this guy pinned on. So this is my treating myself to a little bit of hobbying after weeks and weeks of doing nothing but preparing for Adepticon. I still have work to do. <clears throat> I'm working on today. I'm working on finishing uh, the painting of the last two buildings. Um, I've got to cut some more two by two playing surfaces. Um, I have an old GW grass mat that has got stained on it. So, uh, you know, as a four by six, it's not really very nice anymore, but I can cut very nice two by two sections out of it. So um, I'll be doing that today. And I might even make a ninth set of objectives. It just dawned on me that I had a some stuff already painted up that I could easily turn into a ninth board if I wanted to. So I don't know. We'll see. But I'm treating myself today by uh, making a rider for the giant bat. And I'm excited. I want to get him painted up. I want to get him out and and on the table with some of the rest of my Bakamono. And because uh, it's a cool model. I don't know if it's any. I, I mean, I played it once. It seemed fine. I don't know. Or I played the bat. I didn't play the rider. But uh, it, it seemed fine. I don't know if it's competitive. And frankly, I don't really care. I mean, generally, I don't play Bushido to be competitive. I could play it because it's really cool. Uh, but I do like, you know, it's one of those things. I, I like <clears throat> playing to the best of my ability. And I like, you know, being in the fight, so to speak. But I don't really have a lot of um, ego when it comes to do I win or not you know for me it's more of a did I play well did I challenge my opponent and the only time I get frustrated is when you know as the factions go up and down as with any gaming system some get better and some get worse you know and so when you're, you're stuck with a faction you just can't make work it's it's frustrating for everybody but anyway there you go that's my giant bat and rider um and uh, hopefully you'll see him on the channel pretty soon and thank you for this little tirade <laughs> kind of a rant. You know, I don't do painting videos usually because I'm not that good of a painter. But um, this was, I do, I am, I do take pride in my building. I'm, I will admit that. I have been modifying 40K models for 20 years, you know, I, or maybe well, 25 probably. I don't know if I ever just painted the models that came out of the box. So, uh, so when the models presents a challenge like this, I really, uh, I really get into it. So anyway, thank you guys for joining me and we'll see you next time on Gitspalooza.